Good. CPAs, all the good work you do. There's no point in me just belaboring the good work and just going on and on and on about that because you hear that all the time. You hear from politicians that are going to tell you, oh, we love you, we love you, we love you, and on and on and on. And I've had the opportunity to work with many of you forever because I'm a business guy. And I see wholeheartedly every day what you really, truly do. You know, I could, I could tell you funny stories and all that kind of stuff and make you laugh a lot. But at the end of the day, really, when it really boils right down to it, when we, as a business community, have a problem, who do we run to? We run to you. All the time. All the time we're running to you for advice and knowledge and to get us out of trouble or to help us through a tough situation or to help us with financing or all the different things that you are trained to do in many ways. Now, the one thing that I would caution you a little bit about is just this, is in the world it takes, it takes all of us to turn the wheel. And oftentimes, you know, I've said this many times, but, but a lot of times if you had to hope for something, you know, maybe you would hope for being in a deal on a land purchase with a doctor. Because doctors are in such command of life and death that oftentimes we think we can do things that we can't do. We think sometimes as business guys that we're CPAs and we can do what you can do. And that's when we get in trouble because we can't. You are a star and a spoke in a wheel that's real. Now from the standpoint of what's going on within the state, let's again just tell the truth. Let's just be real. You know, when I walked in the door, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but honest to God, if you had looked at the books that I'm looking at, you would unequivocally say, you got to declare bankruptcy. There's nowhere to turn. I mean, it's all over. This state is gone and beyond gone. Now just think of the numbers. I'll tell you the numbers real quick, and you've probably heard this before, but it's really important that you hear the numbers. You know, when they shoved the books in front of me in the middle of January, you're halfway through the year. The year ends June 3rd. And they said, Governor, we got bad news. We got bad news because this year we're in, we're going to be $219 million short. And I said, hold on, time out, time out, time out. You have a constitutional amendment that, for, for, uh, you know, that for, uh, for prohibits that from happening. What's going on? Oh, well, the wheels just flew off and we're just way, way upside down. But that's not the bad news. The bad news is the first year that you've got to formulate a budget and submit it to the legislature now at your state of the state, we project $497 million short in that year. That's all cumulative. You know, so it just keeps adding on. And then a couple years out from that, we're $772 million short that year. And that was the books. That was the books. So that's where we start. And we started a battle that was unbelievable. Now I'm telling you, and I don't care who you are, you're smart enough to know every single bit of what I'm talking about and know it to be truth. We have had literally a miracle from God happened in this state. Because we eradicated that $219 million, and, and then we eradicated the $497 million, and we turned all of those horrible red numbers into black numbers, and before you know it, in 2019, we ended up with a 
$511 million surplus. It's unthinkable. Yeah. It's unbelievable what's happening in this state. It has happened to tourism and everything coming from. Manufacturing's up, 20,000 new jobs. For God's sakes, a little bit <laughs> what we've done with this Roads to Prosperity thing is off the chart. I could just go on and on and on from education to our veterans to the elderly to the hungry to on and on and on and on and on. I am telling you, you can't hire enough people that are going to absolutely be needed in the future for what's still to come. The stars are all lined up right now. Now whether you like him or not like him, he's a really, really close friend of mine and that's the President of the United States. His best buddy is sitting on this stool right here. Now just imagine that. Imagine that the guy that's the leader of the whole free world, his best buddies in West Virginia and just happens to be your governor. And imagine then all the things that are right on our fingertips that can come. If you don't think the alternative sources or uses of coal, you think it's hocus pocus, you're wrong. If you don't think the petrochemical stuff is going to truly come to West Virginia and the manufacturing is going to really move, you're wrong. If you don't think the pipeline issue is going to be solved, you're wrong. And if you don't think that there's going to be a federal infrastructure program come to America and West Virginia is going to get its fair share of what's going on, you're wrong there too. Now what if, what if, again, you're super smart, super smart with numbers. But think about this, what if I were to sit here on this stool and say to you, West Virginia today, its percentage of severance income to, general, to total revenue is the lowest, the lowest it's been in 25 years. And then I'd say to you, let's take a poll. What kind of shape do you think West Virginia's in? Well, my God, living, all of us would say, well, we're dead. We're dead. But West Virginia is thriving and moving because we are diversifying. Our image is really changing. What's going to happen if our severance incomes do go up? and they go up substantially. What's going to happen to West Virginia with all the different things that I've just told you? More road building. Our, sec our Secretary of Revenue is right here. He would tell you straight up as he could possibly be, and he's a superstar at Dave Hardy. You know, he's doing incredible work, and his numbers are always on the money. They really are. I mean, of all the people around me and everything, Dave is a resource like none of them. He is a superstar. But he would tell you just this. He would tell you that anytime, as I would tell you, anytime you're on a rise like we went through last year, you can't stay on this kind of incline. You've got to build in bases as you go. That's what we're doing right now. We're filling in a base. And we're absolutely right on the cusp of going again. Now, there's so much that are right at our fingertips, and you're going to be the engines that propel us forward. You really are. Now, normally, I wouldn't be anywhere close to this serious, but I can tell you just this. My son, when we bought the Greenbrier Hotel years ago, my son said, walked around and said over and over, he said, Dad, $20.1 million. It's got to be the greatest buy in the history of all time. That's all there is to it. Dad, there's more artwork here than $20.1 million. And then when it lost a million dollars a week for 38 straight weeks, my son, who's a real good business guy, was walking around and saying, Dad, I want to tell you one thing, this place sucks. <laughs> now, the long and short of it is just this. We don't want to get in a situation like that in our state. Our state has so many things that are still right on the cusp of opportunity beyond belief. You can't sell that potential. You can't hardly sell opportunity. But I am telling you, we are poised now and we are on solid ground, and we're getting ready to really go, really go. 
you think about just this. My dad said forever ago, my best man in my wedding and my best buddy. And I can tell you, I miss my mom and dad more than you'll ever know. But he used to say over and over, you know, we take this coal and we burn it. And it's too valuable to burn. You know, there's so many properties to this coal and he really never knew exactly what was what. But he really thought, you know, the brick, coal briquettes and all that kind of stuff, you know, that there was value. Well, today, they're beginning to find ways to make this carbon fiber. Imagine something like this, that you make something that has a real demand, a real demand today for usage. And you make something that is, get this now, twice as strong as steel and four times lighter than steel and won't rust. Think about it. Think about that process today could very well consume 125 million tons of coal and probably all thermal coal. Now, in the state of West Virginia today, we're probably mining just right around 80 million tons of coal. Now, in the entire country, we're mining about 700 million tons of coal. If we had a player that could come to the table and, and that player would bring a demand of 125 million tons of coal, it'd be unbelievable. It'd be unbelievable about putting our miners back to work and all the different things you could do there. Good gracious, I could talk to a blue brain. You know, you can't imagine the number of people that come. There's a big illumination company that we've been courting and everything like crazy from Wales. That, we're, that I truly believe, you know, we're going to get them across the finish line. You know, there's Clorox. It just goes on and on and on and on. Tourism. Think about tourism just a second. Think about a number that I could tell you that tourism, our growth is 58% more than the national growth. It's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable what is happening right in front of us. And the sky is the limit beyond beyond total belief. So I would let I would I would let you ask anything you choose to ask. Please let me let me pause and do that. But then I'd end by just telling you, you know, uh, I'm only here for one reason, and, and and without any question, it doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't need the status. I don't need the ego. I don't need the money. I don't need the next job. I absolutely don't need the next hot tip. I don't need anything except you. I need your energy. It's a snotty job in a lot of ways because when you're charging up a hill, you take a lot of errors, and when you know you're doing it for you, and you know that really and true, there's nothing in this to gain for me, it's a snotty job. And the only thing I can go on is this, and I tell you this as sincerely as I could possibly tell anybody. The only thing in the world that I run on is your energy. And when I look back, and I'm going up that hill, I'm charging with everything I got, and I see you there, we're invincible. But if I don't see you there, it gets lonely. And it gets lonely real quick. Because it is a tough job. Now, with all that being said, ask me something that would really be on your mind. If you choose, yes, sir. I'll give you a softball. Uh, my name is Scott Tony. I'm an accounting professor at W. We actually uh, have several students here from multiple institutions. I know one of which is a, is a bird hunter. Would, would you care to give any advice or encouragement to these people who, who care about the progress of the state? Uh, my advice to you guys would be just this. Someone asked me not very long ago, it was a legislature, and I want you to pay really close attention to what I'm saying here. The legislature said to me, where do you see the state of West Virginia in 20 years? And here's what I said. I said, and you listen close, because this is the answer that you need to hear. I said, I see our state with all the opportunities and all the everything that we would want that other states have. 
whether it be arts or culture or entertainment, anything, roads, anything that other states have, I see us with it and still having the ability to live in paradise. That's what you have right here. You have the future. It's going to be unbelievable, the opportunities. And every day you get up, you look outside, and these ungodly beautiful mountains are there, or the streams are pristine beyond belief, or the air is so pure that you can see across the street like you can't in California. You see the very best people. You see absolutely families that are faith-based and together, low crime. You see the very best place on the planet to live, paradise, with all the opportunities that are going on all over the place that we never had before. That's where I see this. Yes, ma'am. Well, what we got to do to change the population going down, I mean, we're an older state, you know, and, and really and truly, when it really boils right down to it, we have to bring all those opportunities and, and I mean, let's just, let, again, let's just be brutally honest. Forever, West Virginia has been the blunt end of bad jokes. We've been in a race forever with Mississippi on who was going to be dead last in the country. Forever. West Virginia hadn't been first in anything except maybe the number of car accidents with deer. I mean, never. Nothing. You know, what's different today? It's really different. And people on the outside are beginning to think of West Virginia as a diamond in the rough instead of that backward, you know, ignorant state and whatever it may be. Now, as that happens, and you can't do it that quick, it just won't happen that quick. We have more people dying that quick than you can bring in with factories today and have the population going straight up. That is really beginning to change. Really, really beginning to change. And that's what has to happen. Opportunity from everywhere, but it all starts with a job. It all starts with a good job. And it all starts with not solely, even though, trust me, I, I hope all of our coal miners can go back to work but we ran our entire state on the backs of coal forever. And we need to be absolutely diversified because we have so much and so many opportunities all over the place. That's what we need to be, you know, and we're getting there. It's not going to happen just boom, but we're getting there. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Melissa Balls. Um, I live in Union, right there in Monroe County. So right. um, my husband and I are both self-employed. Our biggest struggle that we've had of having businesses here, and I've done it for 20 years, he's been in business for 15, is one, the cost of doing business in this state. When I get done and I look at our, our, our books at the end of the year, insurance is outrageous here, whether it be health insurance, which is very difficult for self-employed people to even get, and the cost of it is outrageous, um, liability insurance, and of course, logging is definitely on the higher end of that. But uh, the cost of doing it, and then on the other side of that is the the difficulty in finding help. And I don't care what industry you're in, everybody seems to be running into that. So all the job creation in the world is great, but if you can't find people to work those jobs, so what's your kind of answer to those sort of issues? Okay, I would tell you first and foremost, I'm not an insurance expert, but I can tell you that I, I have <laughs> in my past businesses or my businesses, we pay a gazillion of dollars to insurance companies to be able to insure us. It's outrageous beyond belief. <laughs> you know, every day that goes by through workers' comp ratings and all that kind of stuff, we get, we, we do get a little better, but we still got tons of ways to go there. And as far as, as far as the employment, it is a monstrosity of a problem. But, but you see, and what I'm saying is, you can't get people to work. You can't, like, you, you can't find them. And we all know that, and that's everywhere. That's all over the place now. Now, let me just say this. Why can't you find them? I mean, let's be real again. Because people left because of all the reasons that I've already said. People left for everything. 
Families became disrupted because grandma wanted to have a picnic and the family was in Denver and Charlotte and Atlanta and everything because they had to leave. They had to leave and go get a job. Well, they're reluctant to come back because it's hard to believe. It's really difficult to believe. The other big problem is drugs. Drugs have cannibalized us and, and, and the drug companies have preyed on West Virginia. It's been tough, man. It's really been tough. And we're doing things like Jim's Dream, which is Jobs and Hope now and all that kind of stuff. And it's really working and everything. The whole gist is just this. And, and this is going to really probably be a little adverse to what you're saying, but I think you understand. In fact, I know you will. It's my job to have 20,000 jobs that we can't fill. And I always want to have that. I, it's my job to keep just pumping out the jobs, pumping out the attractiveness, pumping out the need, and making it more and more and more difficult for people to find employment. You know, not, not employment, you know, for people to, to find employees. That's what I want to do. I want to create more and more and more jobs I want to solve all the problems you're talking about, every, every, everything that you could possibly come up with there. But I want to come out, I want to have the jobs to where constantly we're bringing more and more and more people back. The number one resource to bring people back is the families. The families have just left. So that's basically it. I don't see any other hands. Okay. Again, I thank you for all you do each and every day, and I'll promise you this, we're after it as best we can, and uh, I love the fact that you're from Union. And, I, and a long time ago, I don't know exactly you know, who it was and everything in your family, but you know, one of you guys cut some timber for us a long time ago somewhere, I think. It's hard to cover it. They all seem to do it. So. Yeah. But, uh, for those of you that haven't been to Union, West Virginia, you need to go. It is a beautiful, beautiful, small community in absolutely just uh, a gorgeous county beyond belief. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank y'all.